way from Amherst, originally from South Africa, and now in New York City for the next two and a half months. Welcome to the stage, Maya the Poet. Clap it up for Maya. An introduction. Thank you. <clears throat> how are you guys? Good. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how thick is my accent? You guys can't understand me. <laughs> how are you guys? <laughs> anyway, so today, um, it's true. The gods of poetry do exist because I literally just stumbled outside and I was like, oh, let's see what's happening here. And they were like, well, come and say a few things. So I think I will. Um, the first poem I'd like to read is um, one of the first pieces I wrote. And like a lot of my poetry is, um, I write it from a perspective of being back home. So a lot of the time if I say here, I mean like South Africa or Tanzania where I also lived for like four years. So this first poem is called The Not Working Site. Marie Antoinette once said, for goodness sake, if they don't have bread, well then let them eat cake. Attention you have-nots and have-mites, gather around, no rioting, there's no need to fight. Forget about how your government is not working right, we give to you the networking site, owned by a few with only their <laughs> net worth in sight. See, we want you to stay calm when you don't like something, and this app doesn't come with a dislike button, so uh, sure you're poor, but at least we'll keep you updated on what the latest celebrity craze is. And uh, don't leave your page empty like your plate is, and make sure your profile picture is set like your fate is. So while you'll never be on top, well, at least your face is. Why fight when you have Wi-Fi? See, we're more concerned about what you want than what you need. And with free talk minutes after nine, well, you've got freedom of speech. <laughs> after nine. <laughs> Do you know what the internet's growth rate is? It's crazy. This net has caught on to developing places, but if the world web is so wide, then why isn't it catching the flies on our faces? The speed is amazing, but let's face it. The internet isn't spreading quite as quickly as AIDS is. And the question is, what are our society's priorities? Here, big businesses are run by proprietors from overseas who hire us as laborers. If we say pretty please, I guess what it means to be a third world country is to be run by third parties, investing billions in entertainment and there's no one to teach. At schools, the kids, they baby them, but it's cool because they have BBM, which even works overseas. So while no one oversees them, they'll never get grades overseas. <laughs> because it's more profitable to play pro football than to make sure people can eat. Mm. Wow. So why feed the poor when there's profit at stake? And the masses will starve while the elitists eat steak. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the summer's all oh, pretty good. <laughs> Triple entendre. <laughs> I got lucky on that one. I don't know how that came up. But um, so that's generally the theme of a lot of my poetry. I talk about um, basically imperialism a lot. And uh, my next poem is related. Sorry, I'm a bit sick. So. Um, if you bear with me. Um, so my next poem is, is related. Um, recently I was uh, walking around Harlem and I was asked the, <laughs> the question that became the title of this next piece, Why You Talk So White. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Street kids were chirping, guns were out, Cops were playing in the streets. It was a beautiful day in Harlem. She introduced herself as Chanel. Gums popping, eye rolling, weave twirling hell. Why you talk so white? I could not answer. My expression was the bastard child of pissed off and pity's brief sexual encounter. Why do I talk so white? Pissed off said, Slap that bitch. Let's see if she talks that much shit when her lip is split. Also, when did African Americans hold a convention to decide what black is and why did they not mention this to the rest of the Atlas? <laughs> Pity put her hand on my arm and told me to calm down. Chanel, you are of a displaced people. 
You are what would have happened if Moses and his peeps never left Egypt. I don't know how you did it. I mean, I had an anxiety attack just coming here for college and I know my way back. You're the black rose that grow on top of concrete. That shit won't crack. You're a caged bird with clipped wings that still had the courage to lift. It's amazing you managed to live. But have you bought into the American dream? Did you get a discount? Do you look back on Senegal and thank why Jesus you made it out? Did they sell you the American dream? Did it come at a good price? You don't have to tell me what black sounds like. White people have spent centuries trying to fit me into stereotypes, but black on black oppression just doesn't come in my size. I reply. Yes, Chanel. I sure as hell talk white. Because I'm speaking a white language. Best believe there wasn't a single black person at the meeting with the British made up English or any of the so-called romance languages. And if there were, they were probably serving sandwiches because we're talking about the same people who call us savages. So every time, every time we speak English, we talk white. Like in Afadali, I'm going to Swahili. I'm going to speak Swahili. I'm going to speak Swahili. I'm going to speak Swahili. Well, at least I still speak Swahili. And I can speak Zulu when I feel like it. My spelling is as smooth as butter and I can still speak Shangai with my mother. But it's not your fault, no. I blame those boats. I blame the coast, hell. I blame the tide. I blame the sea for not picking a side. I blame bribes. I blame slave traders and Salau chiefs alike. But it seems like you blame me. For being born into a former British colony, I sound white? As opposed to what? Sounding American? As if either oppressor was better. <laughs> Racism oppresses us all, and you know it. We're part of a system that requires us to be inferior for it to profit, and we don't call it, but fighting each other means we're for it. And so blackness attacks blackness for a future that's bright. Mm. Our end of the tunnel is so narrow, we fight each other to reach the light. Mm. A hip-hop blasting car let out nigger five times before reaching the corner. A billboard advertising hair relaxer had the nerve to print the slogan, love your hair. Street kids were chirping, a fight broke out, cops were playing in the streets, and did I mention, it was a beautiful day in Harlem. been in the States for like a year and a bit and um, before that I lived in Tanzania for four years and because Africa is not a country <laughs> Tanzania is very different from South Africa so um, it's a matter of like the amount of time I've been out of South Africa um, like I start to feel like I'm losing some of some of who I am sometimes and and some of my culture and the connection that I have from back home and the biggest question I kept asking myself because um, uh, my grandmother kept talking about that the ancestors they follow you and they protect you and they give you advice and they talk to you in dreams and I was sitting here wondering like oh and now I'm starting to notice that I think uh, in English more than I think in, in Shanghai which is my mother tongue and um, I was just like, you know, do, do the ancestors understand English? Like, it's just like, and, and even then, like, do, are they, can they hear me from here? I'm, I'm so far from home. And, and all these questions. So I wrote this poem was originally directed to my grandmother, who I referred to as Gopani, which is um, the Shalang word for grandmother. And um, yeah, dealing with these questions, it's called Bones. I've often wondered whether the souls of those whose blood flows through the very marrow of my bones know where to find me. And when I'm low, will my walls tiptoe back home? Will they know where to go? Or will they get lost in this hustle and bustle and end up homeless like I am? Yes, I confess my hips are stubborn now. They no longer obey the sounds of timbilana, timbitatas, changani, kokwani. How do I talk to you? My tongue has become heavy with the weight of time away. I trip, I, I trip, I trip on words. I used to say kokwani. I talk to myself sometimes to remind my mind of what's mine to know and know. I'm not known for my memory. But I've often wondered 
whether the souls of those whose blood flows through the very marrow of my bones know where to find me. And if they make it this side, will they confuse me with the ghosts I reside with, who think they can do as they please? They've dimmed the night sky's eyes because they think they can capture stars and put them into light bulbs. Kokwani, the people here have oceans for eyes and Maravian fetis for thighs and air must go on a diet, hold its breath and walk sideways to squeeze through their narrow noses must be the reason they can't speak slowly and wonder whether the blood of those whether the souls of those whose blood flows to the very marrow of my bones know where to find me when I'm not at home. Well.